My name is Gabriel McIntyre, and I teach people how to make games to save the world. I have been teaching game design for many years at the College of Arts of Utrecht. I have a formula that I use every time to design these games to change people's habits and change people's behaviors. I've been playtesting it for the last year. Everyone from builders to developers, uh, startups, uh, government officials, you know, from the age of 16 to 65 have played this game and they all came up with amazing ideas. It's for anyone who wants to learn how to bring more play into solving the problems of their life. In cities all around the world, I'm looking for players. I have to go and get this game out there. I have to play this game with as many people as I can. The odds that one of those people will make a game that could save the planet in some way. Oh yeah. I just had the workshop The Game Beyond by Gabriel McIntyre and it rocked my world. We were with a group of people, 20 people, and um, they were all around like 40, 50, 60 years old and everybody started moving, everybody uh, started joining in, doing, laughing, creating, all the shared creativity combined made such great ideas happen and it was for me uh, one of the most inspiring days I had in a long time, so thank you very much. Hello and welcome to The Game Beyond. I am your host, Gabe Mack, and here we're going to be talking about serious game design, various tools, various projects, books, all kinds of stuff. This is essentially a great additional resource to The Game Beyond courses that we offer at thegamebeyond.com. Now, having getting all that out of the way um let's jump into today's episode now some of you may realize or notice that there's also a podcast that i am producing from these live streams so if you're on the live stream great but if you miss the live stream not a problem you can also subscribe to the podcast on apple podcast on google podcast on spotify on all of those, you can find the links also on thegamebeyond.com. Have a listen. You know, if you're driving around your car or if you're sitting at the beach at spring break, what have you, these are essentially these live shows and all the ad extra little content that I'm putting out there for you. You can get it also on your MP3 player and listen to when you want it. Okay. Today, I'm going to do something um, new, which I hope you're going to enjoy. I want to do a quick book review. That's right. So check out this book. I've got a couple of books here. And this is a really great source. This is called Unboard, as you can see there. Unboard, right? You can uh, check out the QR code right there. and. You can order it on Amazon. This is an excellent resource for things to do with children, teenagers, even adults. When you're on a road trip or if you're at the house, if you're homeschooling, if you're a teacher and you're looking for activities to do, if you are doing some kind of group project, you know, maybe some kind of you know, team building thing. There is, these are a great resource. You also have unboard games, you know, serious fun for everyone, as you can see right there. It's an excellent resource. Let me go ahead and grab some of the highlights here I thought uh, were fun. Here's one um, LED graffiti. This is a great project. This is uh, LED graffiti, where basically you're make what are called LED throwies, and you can see them right here those little led throwies it shows you how to do it and these led throwies what they're called it's basically a magnet on a little led and a battery and when you throw it it'll attach to some piece of metal and then it'll be like a little christmas light led thing and so this is a really fun project to do to you know decorate and stuff let's check out some other really cool things um oh yeah this is they have some really interesting uh, uh kind of 
comics as well. So you can see this whole comic thing is talking about uh, the importance of asking for forgiveness rather than for permission. Um, don't wait for permission. And it kind of, you know, talks about this whole do it yourself mentality, but also, you know, the various uh, do it yourself people such as the Faraday, right, for the Faraday cage, or Mr. Tesla, of course, you know, or Mr. Benjamin Franklin, you know, these are people who, you know, didn't really wait for permission, they did it. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you should teach your t kids don't ask for permission all the time, but there is something to be said in success about waiting for permission um, rather than just asking for forgiveness after. Freaky fitness. This is also a fun one here. You know, how do you do, you know, fitness, get away from the boring push ups and stuff? Well, you have things like wacky walks, right? Where you're basically, it's like the Ministry of Silly Walks from Monty Python. Or Amazing Aim, where you wad up a sock and try to shoot it into a waste paper basket, right? You know, um, a mini marathon, right? Where you have a little mini marathon where everybody's just going on one leg for a little short bit. You know, um, all these kind of, you know, different kind of things that you can do. There's a bunch of great ideas, activities, projects um, you can do for your classroom, for your homeschool classroom, for you and your friends, especially for the summer coming up. Check out on board. Um, link is in the description. A great game by Joshua Glenn and Elizabeth Foy Larson. All right, great, cool, 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 cool. So, um, let's get to what I wanted to talk about more today, and that is I want to look at this whole idea of AI being used for game design. Now, you may think I'm crazy. AI and game design, of course. Of course, I'm not crazy. We've talked about this before, especially in the master class, how these great crazy tools are being developed and why not look at how we can use these tools for game design and game development. So first off, let's go, let's start at the beginning. Okay, the beginning of all of this starts with this website. I guess we could start here. Chat GPT. Now, I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. You know, a lot of buzz is going on. You know, everyone from Elon to you name it is talking about it. So this right here is Chat GPT. And you can, uh, you know, you can check the uh, links in the description. It's free to join up, free to try it out. If you start using it for a lot more stuff, then you will be charged. But you have a certain number of, you know, free uh, version uh, basically that you can use, you know, to try it out and, you know, do stuff. So let's have a look at how you can use chat GPT to create a serious game. Now, first I want to understand if chat GPT actually understands the difference between, for instance, gamification and serious games. And so I asked chat GPT about that. And this is what it said. I said, explain the difference between serious games and gamification in simple terms. And let's have a listen to what ChatGPT said. Serious games and gamification are both techniques used to make activities more engaging and fun, but they have different purposes and approaches. Serious games are games designed with a specific purpose beyond entertainment. They are used for education, training, simulation, and other serious purposes. These games usually have clear learning objectives and are often designed to simulate real-world scenarios. The goal of serious games is to provide an immersive and engaging experience that can improve knowledge or skills in a particular area. Gamification, on the other hand, is the use of game-like elements in non-game contexts. This can include adding points, badges, leaderboards, or other game-like features to motivate and engage users. Gamification is used to increase user engagement and motivation in areas such as marketing, education, and employee training. 
In summary, serious games are designed as complete games with a specific purpose beyond entertainment, while gamification involves adding game-like elements to non-game contexts to increase engagement and motivation. So that is a really great explanation of what the difference between serious games and uh, gamification is. So now we can actually put in a variety of parameters and we can ask the AI to design us some type of game. So I'm going to put down here in the send message, let's consider what type of game we would like to do. Well, it is coming up to summertime and I know a lot of uh, different folks that I know have the summer camps for kids and they're probably looking for some activities that are around nature or maybe growing in a garden, something in the spring. How could we create some type of serious game for teaching children about gardening and growing food in the garden? So let's ask that. Let's say um, design a serious game that can be played by children from ages seven to, let's say preteen, 12, yeah, seven to 12. Um, design a game, serious game that can be played by children from ages seven to 12 and teaches them about gardening and growing food in their home garden or playground. Now we'll just say and growing food at home. The game should be playable without too much technology. Um, preferably using um, paper and drawing tools. So let's see what chat GPT comes up with, right, for this. Um, and maybe we want to do a focus on, f on focus on permaculture and food forest design. Why not? So let's see what chat PT, GPT comes up with. So this is what it says, and I'll read it to you as soon as it's finished pumping out, you know, all this text, because my goodness, it's really going through some good text here. All right. So doo -doo 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 -doo. let's grab this first. Oop. Let's grab this first section. And let's read this. One potential serious game to teach children about gardening and permaculture design is food forest adventure. Here's how it could work. Objective. The objective of the game is to design and plant a food forest in a virtual plot of land. Gameplay. Players start by drawing a plot of land on paper, using provided guidelines for size and shape. They then design a food forest on this plot, using permaculture principles to determine what plants to include and where to place them. Players can use a provided booklet with information on different plant species, including their ideal growing conditions and which plants complement each other. Once the design is complete, players can start planting their food forest by drawing the outline of each plant onto the plot of land. They can use different colors to represent different plant species, and label each plant with its name. Throughout the game, players will encounter challenges such as pests, drought, and other issues that may impact their food forest. They will need to use their knowledge of permaculture and gardening to solve these challenges and keep their food forest healthy. After a set amount of time, for example one week, 
players can assess the success of their food forest and make adjustments as needed. They can also share their designs and experiences with friends and family to inspire them to start their own food forests. Learning outcomes. Through food forest adventure, children will learn about permaculture design principles and how to apply them to a food forest. They will also learn about different plant species and their ideal growing conditions, as well as how to solve common gardening challenges such as pests and drought. By playing the game, children will gain confidence and skills in designing and growing their own food at home. The last little bit. Overall, Food Forest Adventure is a fun and educational way for children to learn about gardening and permaculture, while also promoting sustainable and healthy food practices. That is pretty amazing. I mean, for one shot off, boom, there you have a very interesting little game. Now, let's uh, take it a step further. Let's tell ChatGPT, you know, not only did it, it did a really great outline of an objective, the gameplay, the different learning outcomes, how the game is played. Um, but let's translate this further. Let's ask it to write a briefing for an art director or an art department so they understand the look and feel of the game. So write a briefing for the art department and art director for the look, feel, and design of, what did he call it again? Food Forest Adventure. Food Forest adventure so <laughs> stop here we see right now it uh, it immediately starts uh, going and writing an actual letter and I'm gonna say don't write a letter do not write in the form of a letter but as a, oh, I didn't type that in. Do not write in the form, oop, form of a letter, but in a clear debrief, project debrief. For the art department. There we go. That's a little better. See, we can adjust, we can pause it and adjust it up there. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with here. Now, we asked it mainly to come up with some kind of visual design here, some kind of guidelines in order to make sure that this game is designed correctly. So let's have a listen to what ChatGPT is going to say to the art department. Project Debrief, Food Forest Adventure Overview. Food Forest Adventure is a serious game that teaches children aged 7 to 12 about permaculture and gardening practices through a virtual food forest. The game is designed to be playable using paper and drawing tools, with a focus on promoting sustainable and healthy food practices. Art Direction, the art direction for Food Forest Adventure should be playful, colorful, and engaging for children. The color palette should include earthy tones such as greens, browns, and blues, with pops of bright colors to make the game visually appealing. The design should be inspired by nature and the environment, with illustrations of plants and animals that are found in food forests. Visual elements. The visual elements for food forest adventure should be clear and easy to understand for children. The interface should be simple, with clear labels and instructions on how to play the game. The drawings of plants and animals should be recognizable and accurate, with additional details that make them visually appealing and interesting. Typography. The typography for Food Forest Adventure should be legible and easy to read, with a playful and friendly feel. The font should be simple and bold, with a size that is appropriate for children to read. Overall, the design of Food Forest Adventure should be child-friendly, easy to use, and visually appealing. The art department should focus on creating illustrations and designs that capture the essence of permaculture and gardening practices, while also promoting a fun and engaging experience for children. Well, 
That seems like a pretty good, I mean, considering it only took 30 seconds for it to generate that text, it would take me a lot longer to have written that out. My goodness. I mean, you know, it's, it's at least a really great starting point of, okay, what, what do I need to get out there? What do I need to get on onto paper? And so for those of you, especially if you're first starting out, you know, as game designers, you know, this is a great resource that you can use to really help you communicate and formulate, you know, these different uh, bits of text and, you know, these translations and the different memos or creating your game design document. In fact, like it showed you just briefly before I started it up here, it started to say, Dear Art Department and Art Director, I am writing to brief you on the design look and feel of our upcoming game. It can do that too. You can have it write an email or some kind of letter. In fact, here's, uh, for instance, a, an example of a letter that was created um, because, you know, a friend of mine, she owns a, a coffee house and she's like, you know, how do I tell these people that want to play here that, you know, they, they keep on asking, but they're just not good enough, you know? So I said, well, go ahead and uh, let's put it in chat GPT and see what it says. And it came up with this great little short uh, text, you know, basically as a review. So you could use that too. I mean, you know, I'll just, here we go. I'll, j I'll just put the uh, uh, first part of it here. Uh, we'll just let it speak out. Dear musical artist's name, thank you for your interest in performing at our coffee shop. Unfortunately, we have received an overwhelming number of submissions and are unable to offer you a performance slot at this time. Please do not be discouraged as we believe that your talent is remarkable and we encourage you to continue pursuing your passion for music. We will keep your submission on file for future reference. I mean, you know, it's great. You know, that saves you, can save you so much time writing those, you know, those messages and those mails. And it's, you know, very well rounded, very well done. Um, however, there are some caveats. So, for instance, um, my friend, she is uh, Sophia Crawford. She is a stunt woman. Um, she's done everything from she was the Pink Power Ranger to Buffy, Wonder Woman, the list goes on and on of the movies that she was actually in stunts for. However, when I asked Chad GPT to write a bio for her, because she says she's terrible at writing bios, it got so much information wrong, even though I sent it to Sophia Crawford's IMDb page. She wasn't in Kill Bill. She wasn't in X-Men. She wasn't in... Uh, uh, Daredevil, I think. So, so she wasn't with the Make a Wish Foundation. She hasn't done a lot of the stuff that it is said. So, beware what you see with ChatGPT. If you're trying to use it for some real research, you do have to double check that stuff because a lot of times it's just really not real. I guess it's kind of like Wikipedia, right? You know, Wik I guess only about half or more of Wikipedia is right. And the other half is just muddied water. So these are kind of the caveats and the things you got to think about when using chat GPT or this AI for game design. However, what a fantastic method um, for getting out, especially brainstorming, getting out some ideas, maybe taking your game design document, putting in there to clean it up, make it more legible, make it a little more understandable because it's also great at doing that. You can upload an entire text file and it will clean it up for you, make it you know, just sound a little better, sound more professional. If you have a blog post about something, throw it in there and whoop, it can clean it up for you too. So ChatGPT is really going to I mean, people are saying this, but it's going to revolutionize everything. However, how? Well, here are some very clear, definable ways that it's going to save you lots of time, number one. But, you know, don't let that creativity go away. There's also another um, video. Ooh, tap, here we go. There's another video I wanted to show, and this is from Microsoft, the semantic kernel. And here in this lecture, which I've also added into the show notes, they actually go through and use 
AI for design thinking. Now, the design thinking method is something that we teach at the Game Beyond in our advanced game production class, but I want to give it a quick highlight here. Now, for those of you who aren't aware or aren't familiar with design thinking, design thinking has a certain set of steps and process which we use to come up with design. And it starts with what's called empathy or empathizing with the problem, empathizing with what it is the problem is, what is, for instance, everybody's problem with the game, you know, it's not fun. Well, why is it not fun? Um, then you have to go and to define, okay, well, what is the actual problem let's define it and then once you after you've empathized with what the problem could be you've defined what the problem is then you can finally start to think ah, ideate and brainstorm different possible solutions to that so i just want to show um going through this whole process of pulling data in first for the empathy so pulling in all of this different data points from various reviews, customer feedback, etc., applying then this defining of what are the key touch points, where are we seeing the most problems amongst our customers, and then coming up with an idea for a solution for those customers. So this is what is going to be done. So let's have a look at this. This is pretty incredible. If you ask me in thinking and making longer chains of semantic functions, we're going to be able to catch a glimpse of the future where, as Steve Jobs said a long time ago, how the computer would become like the bicycle for the mind. This feels like a spaceship for the mind. So let's get flying. Let's open notebook six. We're going to cook chain reactions. Here we go. As you recall, we're going to make a kernel. We're going to load up a skill, a specific skill for design thinking called empathize. It takes this input, this support log. It generates the sentiment and the summary of the issue. It's design thinking is a five step process. We'll just go through three and there's a skill for that, design thinking. Who would have thought? Next up, we're going to take those empathy insights. We're going to put them into the define skill. We're going to chain the information in. We're doing it manually, mind you. And there it goes. It's defined the issues, the problem. And, and you know you should never come to a solution unless you understand the problem. So let's go deeper in the problem. The problem is the customer is not receiving the level of service. What's the source of it, the root cause? Lack of customer service training and resources. So it was basically taking the customer support log, generating the empathy points, different feelings, the sentiment of the customers. It's taking the problems located, defining the problems. And next up, you can ask it to brainstorm ways to lessen the customer's pain. And so here it is processing the ID8 phase of design thinking. And there's two columns here in Markdown. One is for lower hanging fruit, easier things, and higher hanging fruit if you have more time. Now, that was going step by step. But of, of course, I could just chain them all together in semantic kernel. I can just drop my customer support log into the kernel. It can go through the empathize, define ID8 functions, well, the design thinking scale, and voila, it has cooked the different types of ideas I can go after if I have less time or more time. Pretty amazing, huh? That is something that I've never seen in my entire life possible. And I wrote the design thinking scale in just one hour, and we've just begun. There we go. Now you can hear. <laughs> so, I mean, that is pretty cool if you ask me um, that, you know, we can we can start to use. Here's what it's like. To me, it's like in Star Trek, right? When the captain goes, computer, 
what are the possible ways in which we could defeat our enemy, right? You know, and the computer gives a couple of different solutions with, you know, possible uh, like C-3PO with the amount of odds for each one working, right? You know, this is, you know, where, where's the high hanging fruit? Where's the low hanging fruit? We're defeating the Klingons, right? You know, <laughs> it's, it is, but it is really mind blowing. It is really quite, um, it's quite incredible. It's really quite incredible. And we're not done yet. No, 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 we're not done yet because we've got, we've got some more stuff to do. I want to show you even the further development of which you could use using the imagery from ChatGPT. That's right. So let's check it out. There's a couple of tools I want to show you. Now, here we have your uh, basic deep, what's called deep AI um, text to image generator. Now, here you can put in, you know, different prompts of different things and create a different kind of text. So let's take something um, that is pretty off the wall, right? Yet it has, I'm pretty sure there's nothing out there yet on it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Let's do um, roller skating Buddha. I think I spelled Buddha wrong. Um, let's say 3D roller skating Buddha, right? Let's see what it comes up with. Who knows what it might come up with. So right here, <laughs> there we have our 3D <laughs> roller skating Buddha. <laughs> Not quite, it looks like a 3D printed <laughs> roller skated Buddha. Okay, but you know, this this one AI isn't the only one. We can go to, to others here. Let's go to Dali and let's give Dali a try. A 3D photo realistic picture of a roller skating Buddha. Buddha. Is that how you spell it? So let's see what Dali comes up with. Now, Dali, this site is actually from OpenAI. This is the same people who have brought you ChatGPT. And here we have four different versions. You know, I gotta say that uh, that looks a little bit more, it looks a little more like a skateboarding uh, Buddha rather than a roller skating Buddha. I like this one right here. This is pretty funny. This is, this is pretty good, right? This one is also pretty good. And you can go in, you can say, all right, give me some variations of this. Yeah, and it'll actually give you some variations of that version. So this is pretty cool to be able to go in as a art designer or a game designer and just to come up with some creative visual ideas for in your game. It's really quite handy. And um, let's go to some other ones here. One of my, my personal favorites is actually this one here, Mid Journey. Now, Mid Journey uses, um, it's actually a Discord app. So if we go over here to Discord, you can see this is Mid Journey right here. Can I get rid of, yes, I know that. Um, anyways, this is Mid Journey here. And here you can see, I mean, this is quite impressive. Uh, work from Mid Journey. High contrast, low key, lo fi black and white photograph of a baby elephant and its mother. Their feet are shackled in chains. The image is richly textured and detailed. The scene dramatic and somber. Overall, the image portrays a feeling of sadness and fear. It com conveys the hopelessness of nature to escape humanity's limitless greed. 4x3, version 5, 250 pixels, I guess, square. Yeah. But my goodness, what this is a completely fake image. Let me get that clear in your heads. This is completely not real at all. And yet when you're looking at these, they look like a photorealistic drawing of these elephants and it is absolutely incredible. Now, I just went through a bunch of these different um, AIs, you know, especially the text AIs. And I just wanted to to kind of give it a, a, a see the 
what it could do, so to say. So let me just jump over here to, wait, where's my camera go? Oh, hold on a second. Where did that go? I had it here. I had it here. No. No. Where did you go? Tab. Nope. Um. Huh. It, oh, here we go. I've been able to pull it up. I've got it right here. Yes. Okay. So I just uh, wanted to show this. Here we go. AI uh, test right here. What we've got here is basically the ability. Wait, you can't see it now all of a sudden? Oh, now you can. So here we have Canva. Now, Canva um, allows you to actually create um, also text. Here we go. Text to image right here. So I'll also do the same thing. A, oh, we can do photorealistic right here. And we'll say roller skating Buddha. And let's see what Canva comes up with for our roller skating Buddha. Another text to AI. And here we see here, if we, if we zoom in, it didn't get the roller skating, but it did get the Buddha. Right. Oh, here we there's there's the roller skating at least, but it doesn't look like the Buddha. Now, I've put in a, a couple of different variations into these um, into these uh, uh, different text to AI. And I want you to think, OK, can you guess these two movies here? According to text to AI, just putting in the movie title. We have here right here. We have the Matrix, if you guess that. And over here, we have the Big Lebowski, right? So this is what AI thinks the Big Lebowski in the Matrix looks like. Here we have the Big Lebowski even further. This is kind of funny, you know, the Big Lebowski is the video game, right? You know, here we have another version of the Big Lebowski over to my, I guess that would be my right looking towards you or left on the screen. Um, here we have another one. All right, which movie do you think this is? This is from different AIs. Those of you who are listening to the podcast, um, very dark, it's a single face of a guy. He's kind of bloodied up. Um, it has a very Tyler Durden kind of feel to it. There you go, Fight Club. That is Fight Club according to AI. Or how about... This one, this is pretty good. I got to admit, this is almost spot on. You know, the sound of music. Yes, the sound of music. The hills are alive with AI in this picture right here. Now, you, you notice that some things aren't quite right. Like if you notice over here, I mean, what is going on with these fingers? Fingers and AI seem to not very work very well. And this nose, the face on this nose, what's going on? And how about this terrible drop shadow as in some, you know, first grader Photoshop work? I mean... <laughs> There's some good and there's some bad text AI out there, I got to say. Here we have another one. This is actually pretty good. Star Wars, that's pretty clear. Luke Skywalker right off the bat. And as you can see, you know, certain AI, they kind of deform. This looks like a, a Skywalker who, I don't know, it looks like he's part Planet of the Apes, part Luke Skywalker. I'm not sure. There's something... Something a little, little crow magnet about that face. And here we have, look at this one. I love, look at Chewbacca here. What the heck is going on with Chewbacca here? Look at these faces in this Star Wars poster here. And But, you know, certain AI can go on. It can make, you know, kind of new characters. I mean, I don't know who, who this guy is right here. Uh, oh, no, sorry. This guy is right here <laughs> to my top. But he looks like he could be some kind of Star Wars character. And this poor dude with the mustache, zombie eyes, my goodness. But look, they got R2-D2, some kind of Ewok gone. You know, Darth Vader's pretty clear. You know, Princess Leia's pretty clear. Some AIs are better than others in getting those faces. Here we have a great example for character development or character design. To the left, 
We have uh, what happens when minions uh, go to civil war or riot, right? So rioting minions. I mean, that's pretty great. Here's a, a little blue monster character, right? You know, kind of like from monsters. Um, here's some pictures or graphics to use for, you know, any kind of game, you know, for kids and the nature. Although it looks like this one kid is drowning over here, you know. <laughs> Um, here's some other, you know, pics that I actually put in, you know, for this, you know, what could that nature kind of game look like, you know, and certain AI did it better than others. Although, you know, you see some really weird things like for instance, here, are these dice, these dice never exist in reality, especially with the, the numbers on here you have one, two, three, but then you have this one, two, three, four, and it's all kind of clumped together, not like a regular dice. Even the shape looks like it melted in the sun. And then you get, you know, to the right we have here is a cool kind of manga fight, but, you know, then what's going on? Like this hand is getting chopped off. I'm not quite sure. It's like melted in with this axe, you know, very bizarre stuff. I mean, this is some... This this starts get you, getting you questioning, you know, do electric sheep dream, right? You know, the, the whole uh, the whole Blade Runner thing, you know, what is what are the the subconscious of AI? Well, we're seeing it happen right now. Here we see on the left we see what's called a marshmallow storm, and on the right we have a hyper realistic remastered FIFA World Cup. I mean. The, I, I got to say, I really love that marshmallow storm. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty cool looking. You just got this marshmallow, this 3D. I mean, it looks like it looks delicious. Honestly, I would eat that up. Um, now let's get in a little bit into a little deeper. Here we see the AI um, being asked children that are rainforest rangers save the rainforest with newly created AI app. And here we have a great poster that's turned into that and we can take that a step further and asking it to create posters with designs for the for actually the interface as well you know if we put that in further hey create an interface well here you go here's your little interface right here here's your your poster for your game right here this has all been 100 percent generated by ai right so you can take that text from that chat GPT, you know, how do I tell the art department how to design this? And you can throw that into some of these text to image AIs and you can start to get, you know, these images and these, you know, designs and interfaces. And then you can go and take it and say, okay, now give me the JavaScript code uh, to play it, you know? And the next thing you know, you are together with AI creating an entire serious game. This is mind blowing, folks. This is mind blowing. I mean, we've got it goes on further. It's not just, you know, images and, and text. Oh, no. Um, we also have, for instance, audio. I can take and I can create different characters and I can have them say stuff. Here, have a listen. You're listening to the Game Beyond podcast with host Gabe Mack. Harness the power of play with serious game design. Right? I can even take that audio and I can, for instance, put someone else in, or maybe I want to change some of the pronunciation. Maybe I want it to be more of a newscast uh, kind of style. Let's try that. Let's see what happens when we go to more of a newscaster style. Would that work better? You're listening to the Game Beyond podcast with host Gabe Mack. Harness the power of play with serious game design. Do you want to become a serious game designer? Go to thegamebeyond.com and learn how to harness the power of play. I mean, that is pretty cool. The, you can create your characters, have them do all the audio voiceovers. You know, you can even get these pictures generated from chat AI. It's, it's not going to be too much longer. I've seen some early um, tests for actual animation, text to animation. So you're getting... 3D visual animations, you know, videos that are being generated. It's still a little off right now. It looks a lot like um, if you were to take and draw each, 
image by hand with a you know slight variation of the AI generation so everything kind of flickers and stuff on some of them some of them are getting there some of them are getting there now you know if you, if you look around you can see some really great examples but I wanted to jump into this because this is such a key hot topic issue at the moment you know with AI and and how it can be used um, Let's see what else do we have here. Oh yeah, here's this is fun. Um, this is a game interface using the coach mechanic in a cyberpunk Big Lebowski world. Now check out these four interfaces, these game design interfaces that was created by this AI, uh, chat to text AI. Pretty good, I gotta say. I see, I feel the game. I totally feel it. I get the look and feel, absolutely. Or here we have some character design. Characters design, an evil, menacing, savage, green giant with glowing red eyes and long, flaming red hair. Wearing a loincloth with fangs for teeth, camera angle panning up to look at him against a forest background. Wearing a garland of human skulls, mist, photorealistic octane render, unreal engine, hyper detailed volumetric lighting. And would you look at that picture that it creates? I mean, this is absolutely wow. Wow. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> and, you know, I say, hey, maybe this is the right version. Boom. Give me three more versions like that. Right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to hurt a lot of jobs for those that don't figure out how to harness this beast. I can tell you that right now. It is. This is game changing, folks. We are changing the rules, changing the rules. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So, yes, that um, has been a little tour in what can be done just rudimentally right now using AI tools for serious game design and for game designers. And I didn't even get into any of the programming stuff at all. I'm not going to get into that. Just making character images, having make board game images for you, creating rule sets, creating activities, all these different things you can use this tool for. And if you're stuck, if you've got, you know, brainstormers, you know, fog there, you can't get anything out. This is a great way to get it going. This is a great way to get that visualization started. Um, you know, you're, you're on a crutch and you just need to get something out quick, you know, to start the meeting. Boom. Here we go. You can use this too. So I really hope you enjoyed looking through these tools. Um, and make sure if you haven't yet, Make sure you sign up and check out more of our courses on thegamebeyond.com. Remember, our master class registration has opened up for the coming semester, right? So you want to make sure you get in on that because seats are limited. And you do get one of these awesome certificates with your name right here and my signature and you know the date that you have completed the game, serious game design masterclass. Yeah, I mean, come on. Don't you want this hanging up in your place? It's awesome. It's awesome. All right, so I've been Gabe Mack. I hope you have enjoyed this. Make sure to tell your friends about the game beyond. Join in together. Make sure to like and subscribe. And it really helps me out, I tell you. Um, and yeah, everybody, I just want to say last thing, play on. Thank you.